Um, I would like to call to order the Cohasset. Well, first I'll read the general law. Um, so pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20B, following Governor Baker's declaration of state of emergency um, arising from the pandemic, the advisory committee may meet virtually utilizing remote technology and all votes will be taken by a roll call vote. So I would like to call the meeting to order. This is Wednesday, January 31st, 2024 at 7.03. Um, so could I have a roll call, please? Mike Barkley? Mike Barkley here. Mark Cameron? Mark Cameron here. I don't see Fran. Um, and Rob is not here. Diane Kennedy? Diane Kennedy here. <laughs> uh, Mark Maggi. Here. Mary McGoldrick. Here. Meg Wheeler. Here. And Gina Stino. Here. Okay, so as I said, this is, it, I'm a little rusty on running meetings and I've never run one virtually before. So feel free to comment, raise your hand if, you, if I miss something. Um, and also because I've never done this before, Mary is going. Mary and Chris are going to handle the the camera work um, and share share screens. So um, comments by the chair. I've already said a little bit of what I was going to say about have, having not done this before, um, but I do want to try to implement some procedures that hopefully will make things easier for people. Um, instead of just blindly posting an agenda, um, on Fridays, I plan to release a draft agenda to the best of my ability of what the communication items might be for the following week. Um, just like I did this past week, I trust that everybody got a draft agenda on Friday. And then the official posted version will be sent out on Monday. Now, in this last agenda that was sent out on Monday by Tracy, there were 15 attachments, and I hope nobody panicked, um, because we probably won't touch on all of those tonight. You've got the list of what I plan to touch on tonight. Um, I just wanted everybody to kind of have top of mind what's going on and what we're going to be working on going forward. Any questions? No? Sounds good. Good. Good, thank you. And so the next item on the agenda is stabilization funds, road stabilization and school stabilization. And you may recall, I did a little bit of a um, fact finding to see if anybody was available for last night's Board of Selectmen meeting so that we could have had a joint meeting with us, the select board and capital budget and it didn't work, which is fine, but these are two of the items that the um, the select board want to kind of pin down as far as the process for um, the proposed policies and making sure that those are those are um, written so that they're adopted and they're clearly worded so that everybody understands how the funding will happen. And I think that that's probably about all I wanted to talk about. Um, Chris, at last night's select board meeting, did they discuss this at all? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, they're, they're, I, I, you know, it was a long meeting last night. Um, so they, um, they, they're just, I, and if, the, if, if your, if your board has any more comments on the policies, um. That would be great. No, actually, they didn't really talk about this last night. Um, uh, they have. There's. There, I think you've all received copies of the draft policies that govern these funds. Um, the, the, what Jean was refer, refer. Go ahead, Mary. Um, just a, a quick question. We. I think we looked at those policies, and it was before the special town meeting. Right. It's, it's been some time, so maybe the thing to do would be to put it on the agenda for our next meeting, and although that might be too late, um, but just to take a peek or at least circulate it. And then the other question I had was the list that, so the document that came through with the, um, with the capital, 
the proposed capital projects for this year that also has two columns for the two different stabilization funds. Is that the most fulsome list that we have right now? The the, the policy, sh the only thing that's going to be different is they're going to be broken into two. I don't know if the version you have has. No, has it, it actually was. It's a, it's a great little Excel sheet. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, you tell you talk about the pol you talk about the actual capital. I'm talking about the, the capital listing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The 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 policies, the board. What the board is trying to finalize is the policies that kind of govern the road stabilization and school stabilization fund. And one of the elements of it is there's supposed to be an annual meeting, like a joint session, right? Just just to go over that and uh, and get feedback from the, you know all the boards and because um, the select board annually has to decide whether or not to continue the fund, and if so, to increase it or not, it go up two and a half percent. So um, this year's already happened, right? So it's, it's it's the money's already being collected, as everyone knows. And um, and then it'll be available for spend at annual. Um, and um, then you know, we have the money for next year. So uh, the select board, I think, is already planning to keep next year's in place as well. So. All right, is this gonna cycle for the-, the It's gonna cycle for the fall. It's going to cycle to the fall. These conversations okay. typically take place in the fall okay. in advance because that's when they have to decide whether or not they're going to keep the fund, right? So they have to have a meet. Before the tax rate set, they have to decide what the numbers is going to be. Okay. So that, that may probably take place in October, I would think, normally. But All this right. year, they just want to start the process of getting feedback, I think. Okay. So okay. so this is this will not be in the June town meeting? Yes, this yes, yes, yes. The spend will be in the June town meeting. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're, we're we're much more compressed this year than we normally be. Normally, what what it would be would be, okay. Here's the, it's it's the fall. Are we going to keep the fund? Yes or no. What are the goals for it this year? Are we going to increase it? Are we going to keep it? Are we going to increase it. Um, so, uh, but this year, it, it, this year it's already been determined that the fund exists and the money's going to be there. So this year it's really just a conversation about the priority items for it. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you. Which I think you've I think in, in the in what you've what you've gotten, you've already seen a kind of a first hit, first look at that. Um, so. I think Diana had a question, Jean. I, I yes. Um <clears throat> but one one more uh, comment on that. One of the things that Jean wanted to do is look at the financial policies because she said that the changes only went up through 2021 for the reserve fund. Um, and she wants it to be consistent with the budget message and also look at free cash and capital policies. So those things are all kind of in the works. Um, and then the policies should, says select board intends to maintain an increase by up to blank. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a figure in there because I'm not, uh, but obviously not to exceed the two and a half percent for the stabilization funds as was pre presented to voters to fund school and road repairs, so. That's just a little snapshot of what she sent me and what she intended for last night, if we had been able to get a joint meeting going. So Diane? Yeah, I, I think my question was answered, which is that the select board has not yet approved those stabilization policies. Correct. Correct. Right. So we're gonna get another look at it at, at a subsequent meeting. Right, and they want us to present something that we have also looked at and approved. You have the so draft. Yeah, they want they want they want the select board wants the advisory committee's comments on and input on these their draft. Uh, right. Yes. Right. Which Kent was already given. So great. Uh, Thank I, you. And, and and also just so you all know, the select board did incorporate elements of your budget message into theirs. If you didn't see that. So. Okay. Good. All right. So the next agenda item is town manager updates, and we can take these out of view, out of order, Chris, because um, I know okay. that you introduced well, Corey at the beginning. So let me let me do that first. So um, I'm very happy uh, to introduce our new town accountant, Corey McGrail. You can see on the screen. I'm on my Brady Bunch screen, just to my right, but I'm not sure where she is on yours. So. Um, Corey, um, Corey is a um, CPA, which we're very excited about, um, and a municipal accountant in training. Uh, she's super enthusiastic about all of this, uh, but she didn't really have any municipal background. That said, being a CPA is a huge foundational aspect for us. Uh, and she has been in with us since, uh, geez, October. Is that about, is that right? Oh, yeah. 
November 13th, when the special town meeting was. There you go. I won't be able to forget it. Um, so she started with us in November, and she's been being mentored by two different former finance directors. A gentleman named George Samia, who was a, he's retired. He had been a, um, a finance director on the South Shore in several large communities. Who have, you know, so I happen to have a home in Situate as well, so it makes it a very easy community to visit. So he comes in one day a week. And Don Pyatt, our former finance director, has been uh, uh, contracted through his current firm. And he's with Corey one day a week. And, and it's a full day. He's with her like a whole day going through. Uh, oh, maybe, he, he's only I, four hours. I thought it looked like that. I, every time I see him, he's always there with you at night. Yeah, he's he's there. It's just he then stops with me and he goes and does uh, his EPA okay. work. But sorry, so yeah, he's coming in for one day. We've been only only four hours, but we're, we're going to return a screen. Hopefully, hopefully getting more out of him when his busy season's a little less. Okay, so um, and plus Corey's had a lot of other training. Um, uh, so but 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 so she's great. Um, she's going to be fantastic. Everyone's saying great things about her. That said, one of one of the chat. I'll introduce herself in just a second. One of the challenges she's facing is that she really kind of has to rework uh, our prior finance director, uh, which I should call our interim finance director, um, um, basically abandoned a lot of Don's policies and directives, and, and Corey's basically having to rebuild them. Uh, she had a very different, the prior finance director had a very different philosophy, which in hindsight was probably not what we needed. Um, that said, uh, she found uh, greener pastures anyway. So um, Corey's helping to rebuild those. Uh, and, and to be clear, the, our finances are fine. We just won an award for our, our fiscal statements from last year, uh, from 22, we just filed for 23. So we're, we're in fine shape. Um, it's just the internal reporting and stuff was a little, she, Corey has to get that a little bit more back on track. And she's made great strides. She's also going through lots of training. She, you're, I used to, she's in the middle, I think, still of a, of a big municipal training class. Let me let her, let me stop. Let me let her introduce herself. <laughs> and, and, and so, and welcome to the town. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so I am doing some training. I, I've never had municipal accounting experience before this, so I am appreciative of the opportunity to learn this field. I've done 15 years in private industry with John Hancock, Putnam, and a few CPA firms. So a mixed background, seeing various industries. Um, but so the big training that I'm doing right now is with the one guy that everybody knows, Mark Abrams. He's kind of like the guru of municipal accounting. Um, help set up like all like the UMIS guidelines and manual. Um, so we're doing his boot camp, And then he also teaches at the municipal law class as well. So I can find out the law side of municipal accounting. I am set to go to there's a class every year on Amherst. And I am registered to go to that as well. And then I also Chris, I don't know if you were informed, I did get accepted to the Suffolk MMA program. So that'll be um, every Friday for the month of March. So those five Fridays, nine to four, I'll be taking a, a virtual class through Suffolk. So just trying to jump in and learn as much as I can. And like I said, there's some adjusting that needs to be done from uh, the prior finance director. Um, I think Dawn had a really good system. It seemed like she kind of veered away from it a little bit. And so it's good to have him back that one day a week, just showing me how he was doing it. It seemed like he had a really, you know, well working machine, you know, going well for him. He had good system procedures and stuff. So following his footsteps and, um, you know, I've been meeting with different departments, you know, if they have any issues, I've been, you know, just meeting with them right away to see, you know, what their issues are, what we can fix to solve, help their reporting, to make sure that they're on track with their numbers and understanding it. Because uh, I think that there's a little bit of disconnect with communications with the prior director. And so anybody that wants to talk to me, I'm, I'm an open book. Come meet me, come talk to me. We'll have a meeting. We'll get things straightened out. And so we can all be on the same page. Great. Thank you. Yep. And welcome. Thank you. And just from an operational point of view, so one of the titles that I that I hold is Chief Financial Officer. Um, I'm Town Manager, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Procurement Officer. So we've always, because we're small, we've always had a kind of a hybrid finance director, town account. So for now, Corey is the town account and I am the finance director, which just means I'm overseeing the finance office and doing more of the strategic stuff. So I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm fairly confident to do that. And again, I have other people to work with. So we still have Don, I have George, you know, they're retired. So we have, there's other people that have been doing this to bounce them off if we need to. Um, and um, 
And again, Corey's Corey's learning a lot. I, I mean, she's she's I, I, every time I'm in there, she's behind their desk working away, and uh, and she's really done some great stuff. So, as we go through the the, the, the mid year report, I will say if there's any, any she's done a great job with it. Some of the there there are some a little bit of disconnects between some of the reports, only because some of the formulas were again have to be redone. So she's done an amazing job. Any any issues are mine, not hers. <laughs> uh, that said, our numbers are all good. I will say that we're in good shape. The money's coming in, and uh, by the time I think, I think by later this spring, once we and actually Corey's working on the budget with, with us now too. So we're going to be building the twenty five budget. So I, I think we're yes, with um that's the George Samia. That's the other consultant. He comes in on Fridays for those four hours, and he was a finance. He just retired from Foxborough as that finance director. He's very knowledgeable of men in the industry. I think what like thirty plus years, Chris. Yeah. So I mean, he's in just recently retired so not like 10 years retired he's so he's um he's really good he's very organized he he's got a good his good systems that he's um carrying forward and showing us you know good ways to set up budgets and um i'm, I'm excited for what he's doing he's he's doing a really good job um, and teaching me along the way showing me how it all kinds of fits together so i can see the connections and stuff so I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask what um, accounting firm you started with, Corey. Um, so I oh, actually... Right out of college. Right out of college, I actually interned during college. I was at Bridgewater State for my undergrad, and I interned with Putnam. And then I got a job with... And I graduated in 2008, so very tough time for being a freshly graduated student and trying to find a job. Um, so I was able to get a job right away with Putnam since I'd already interned with them. I was on the like the bank side, cash reconciliations. I stuck with them for about five years doing the financial reporting of the mutual funds. Uh, I went to John Hancock after that. Um, and then just to try to be more well-rounded in my accounting is when I then went to some CPA firms, small ones, um, you know, just local, you know, not even regional, like much smaller, like only like 10 people in them type firms. Um, but it was good. It was gave me a lot of mom and pop shops, gave me an exposure to a lot of different industries. Right. Um, and just really seeing like a soup to nuts type of thing where like when I was with John Hancock and Putnam, you kind of very focused in, in a niche versus seeing a whole picture. So like I said, it was, that was just more about trying to get a more well-rounded like you know accounting type of background mm -hmm. um i eventually did go back to john hancock but i went that's when i went and got my master's i got my cpa license i went back to john hancock um and then i also they have the mutual side but they also have the life insurance side yeah and so i did go to that side as well and was doing the financial reporting on the legal entities for the um life insurance policies those companies thank you i was just curious because early on i worked 15 years for arthur anderson in human, oh. in human resources. So I was just curious. I worked in the recruiting end. So I was just curious how you ended up and landed where you did. Yeah, it was kind of like a roundabout way. But I feel like, you know, like I said, I've touched upon a lot of different areas, um, you know, spent a few years in each spot. Um, so I feel like it kind of exposed me to different industries, different sides of accounting. Um, so, you know, it just helped me to always keep learning and having to learn different regulations, rules, and governing bodies of, you know, this is how you do it for mutual funds. This is how you do it for life insurance. Now I'm learning this is how you do it for municipal. Well, municipal finance is definitely different, and it's very hard for people to understand that it's not like being in business. So, Correct. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, Mike, your question, and then Diane. I was going to say, if you've done life insurance accounting, you can do pretty much any accounting. That's that's as <laughs> <laughs> gnarly as anything um no just question for chris just um a couple things uh so fiscal 2023 books are closed all set i mean just along that lines of the prior finance director veering away um is that all set the 2023 yes um, financials at this point the books are closed the audit's done the audit's complete um and we, we have our free cash certified right that's all done uh, we, we've spent it right so or, or at least a chunk of it uh, we're going to have the partner come in from uh, from Paris and Sullivan in February, late February, or early March to do the audit update. And all of you will let you know, so you can most certainly attend that. Um, and uh, we'll circulate the uh, CAFR, the, um, the uh, or it's not called that anymore. It's the it's the comprehensive uh, um, 
uh, financial statements that we do for the government finance officers for for, uh, for awards. So that's complete. So once I get an electronic version of that, I'll circulate that to all of you as well. So, so everything is good on that side. So what, what we're talking about in terms of systems is more internal, right? It's it's how we were tracking things, how we were processing things. And it was just very different from what we had done before. And again, this is not meant as a criticism. It's just, it was a pretty radical sea change, even in how we did purchase orders, right? She didn't like them. So she was getting rid of them. It's like, well, how are departments supposed to know where they are? Well, they have to keep their own records. Well, you know, I don't know if that was the best mm. answer because yeah. <laughs> we have tiny little departments, right? I'm, I mean, I love Carlos calling her plow the streets in the middle of a snowstorm or and and, and fix your, you know, <laughs> fix that flooding in the middle of a hurricane. But he doesn't do Excel. And uh, so I think we've kind of returned to some of the systems that made more sense. Um, and, and that said, uh, you know, we, we weren't really out of, out of that for very long, which is good. So it's not like we have a lot of rebuilding to do. It's more just kind of like plugging in some gaps that may have been left. Because, um, I mean, Don had developed a very robust system. Now, the other side of this, uh, uh, Mike, I don't mean to belabor this, but I will for a second. We have a really robust treasurer collector's office, too. And they've, uh, so we had a big turnover in that stamp, but they're really humming. So like Corey and Linda are doing cash reconciliations monthly perfectly. So I'm, I'm good that that's all happening. And they're doing it actually better than they used to. And then Corey also has the luxury of an assistant accountant who's phenomenal. Diane knows soft right inside and out. So even as Corey's coming up to speed on that, Diane knows how to make the systems all work really well. So they're, they're making a nice partnership. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to say, I mean, when I joined, I had the opportunity to sit with Don and go through things. And, you know, he was extraordinarily, you know, well-organized, structured. And, you know, I guess just, you know, for, you know, from kind of a controls perspective, seems like he had a pretty good blueprint and you know how, how do we in the future just make sure that people aren't wandering away from that so to speak i mean there's you can always talk about improvements um but just i don't know maybe you know food for thought for the future is just to you know not let that stuff get away yeah uh, no I, I you know it's a lesson learned for me too you know you hire somebody with lots of experience lots of experience right and and you you I don't want to talk about that. So so let's just say yes, we understand that. Uh we're in good shape. Corey's gonna be a phenomenal, isn't a phenomenal account, she's gonna be a phenomenal municipal accountant. And uh it's somewhere down the road she will uh, assume at least part of the mantle as finance director. But I don't want to drown her. Uh, she already has a fire hose of finance blowing out right now. So um so we're good. Yeah, no, no, she's got great experience and welcome, Corey. Um we're thrilled to have you. Diane? And, and Chris, uh, I've been working with Chris long enough that he ends up anticipating all the questions. So I think you've addressed it. I, Corey, thank you and welcome. We're super excited. I actually think it's probably right to have somebody sort of at their, the beginning of their municipal um, accounting um, firm so that the, the, because, you know, it's not not to belittle it, it's complicated, but it's not rocket science and, and the system shouldn't be fiddled with um, all the time. And then the other question I, I had was about the the sort of position of finance director, which is kind of in the charter of the town, um, whether that's, you know, whether you anticipate Corey getting to that point or whether that would be an additional hire at some point where yeah, you're taking on that role now. Yeah, so I, I I do expect again, you know, I, I think Coral grow into that, um, and I, I it just profession, right? So so, yeah. um, it, it there's not a there's not really a timetable on that. I mean, I, again, I have other resources to tap, and okay. you know, the job has always been about two thirds accountant and one third finance director, really. Uh, and and by the way, in fairness, our prior finance director uh, did give us some really interesting elements this last year. Um, she was very good at the big picture stuff. She just the stabilization you know, funds too. Right, were exactly. Right, right. That was, that was yep. there were. Now that said, that she didn't like the minutia. Now, unfortunately, this job has a lot of accounting in it, right? Okay. It just is. And she didn't like that at all. And uh, you know, we were we were totally transparent about that at the beginning. This job is two-thirds account and one-third finance director, and sometimes it's even less finance. That said, she did take part in all of the meetings we had this this last year building up to that big financial report. And, and so, you know, I I don't the, the, so that end was all happening. Uh, it was the nitty gritty stuff, and unfortunately, you know, you can't do the big picture if the nitty gritty is not getting done, right? <laughs> if, if 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 the accounts aren't balancing out, right? so um, so yeah, I do, I do. So I, I also think that because has 
again, if she, if she needs more, we're going to give her more. That said, she's she's checking all the boxes. And and one of the goals we have when we hired her is, is for her to get some certifications over the next couple of years, become a certified government accountant, you know, get a certification from either GFOA or the, you know, there's another entity that does these. And, and not just for the sake of having the certification, but having gone through the process, right, and say, okay, I've got that. And um, uh, and that, like, we have a good team around her, too. So I'm, I'm you know, we, as you know, two years ago, you know, we had a wave of retirement. It was just like, you know, it was a post-COVID, yeah, I don't really need to do this anymore. Uh, the good news is we've rebuilt uh, the treasurer of the collector's office and the finance office, and even assessors, right? We just lost Mary Quill, but we have a seamless transition with Rachel Carla because um, they're all integrated, right? The assessors, treasurer, collector, and, and, the, and the accounting office, all what's finance. So one of the roles the finance director has, by the way, is to be the boss of those people. That's, that's their job. Don was kind of soft. I mean, not, not that it really needs a lot of management, right? I think everyone runs really well, but I'm I'm kind of playing a bit more of a role in that as, uh, as we go. So. And, and Chris, other than that finance director position, which I completely understand where it's at now, is that is is the accounting department fully staffed? Yeah. yeah okay, perfect. Staffed. And uh, again, I, the nice thing is I think Diana Corey can be with us for the long haul. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, Corey seems to come in with a smile every day still, right? So uh, that's good. Uh, and, uh, and some hopefully we'll have even you know a nicer office for us. Who knows? Very well, good, Corey. Thank you for hanging out in the room when we were pretending you weren't sitting in the room. That was interesting. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> we're very thank glad you. you're here. <laughs> thank you. Any more questions on this? Then we will move along. Um, town hall update, Chris. Uh, so the select board had a conversation last night, a very extensive one. So where we are, uh, so you all know, is that um, billing department, the billing inspector has uh, did, uh, after the 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 end of the last town hall renovation project in May, we had to take a step back internally and figure out what ne what the next steps were about the building and take another hard look after the 2018 project lost. We did an analysis of the building and and said, well, "What are the crises here? What what?" And we had, you know, our our Bob Egan was our was our building inspector and set up code code's good, right? And uh, and then uh, didn't raise any issues. And then Pam Fahey did water tests and air tests and mold tests and you know did a and you know there was some mold here and, and there and the water wasn't as hot as it was supposed to be. There, there was nothing that was you know the end of the world at that moment. And then we moved to try to get to some repairs. And as all of you know. Uh, well, I don't know if you all, uh, some of you want to hear. There was a proposal to fix the roof, right? We're going to do a concrete repair of the roof. And then on town many floor, I got a Menatel paint job. So instead of repairing the roof, uh, the town painted the bill for the 250. Want to look nice. So, and then what happened? The pandemic came, right? So, uh, and then the board uh, rebuilt the committee. And, uh, that's, that's, and, and and that that ground through. And then that project failed uh, uh, at town meeting in the spring of last year. And we began to look heavily at what, what where are we now, right? It's been a decade. The, the big report that came out in 2013, 14 identified a whole lot of issues. And none of them had gotten better in the succeeding decade. None of them. And um, so there was that alternative project that went forward, right? At the same time. So we kind of, you know, looked internally and said, well, we took a hard look at the auditorium and said we had to, John Hallett took a look at it and said, hey, we got to get some things done here. We can't have a, you know, they're having summer plays, right? Some that summer, summer drama club stuff. We can't do this unless you we do these like six things. So we did. And um and they said, I really want to take a hard look at some of these other fire issues. I said, okay. And then um after November and that lost, it's like, well, we we have to do something here. And so John Allen had a code company come in and say, hey, you know, you bottom line is uh the, the fire code isn't met right now. No one's gonna burn up and die tomorrow, but there's there's code compliance issues and they have to be addressed. And uh he amended that uh with some some alternatives, some ways to interimly uh, uh, address them. And the board uh, last night said, okay, go forward with those. Um, and it's what it's going to mean is we're going to have to pull staff that are on the second floor. Right now, the auditorium is closed. We can't use that. The election that's coming up in March is going to be a local commons. Um, and we're exploring alternatives for the future. So we'll kind of revert to a backup. And then the, um, the primary location will probably be the uh, Deer Hill School Auditorium. That's uh, Jim. I'm sorry. I think that's what's being explored for the fall. And uh, so, but the second floor can't be occupied either. So we have 
Corey. <laughs> for poor Corey and Diane are up there. The assessors are up there. And um, uh, we have some IT, uh, an IT admin, a sewer admin, Brian Joyce, and, um, and the facilities has their central office there. So, um, or their administrative office, I should say, because they're really their officer in the field and their, and their workshop section of the schools. So, um, so we're gonna we're in the process of them moving those out. A fire watch went into effect this week, so we have a a fire watch, which really means literally a, a staff or a volunteer is on a rotation to walk around the building to make sure there's nothing going on. They're not they're not a fireman. They're not to be a fireman. Only have to, they're just like an extra level of, of alert beyond the smoke detectors and things that are in various places at both buildings. Um, the the historic structure has no fire prevention in it. There's no. Um, there's no fire separation barriers to the best of our knowledge and uh, in inside the building and there's there's no sprinkler system uh, and there have never has been so the the proposal that the, the the work that the facilities department's doing now will repair the basement there's actually a fire door in the basement it's the only place that's actually have working fire doors so they got to fix repair the work repair that there's some work that has to be done and then we have some, an architect coming in to, to to scope out what has to be done at the first floor and the second floor uh, and then um, uh, the board voted to use some remaining offer money to fund that. And um, we're going to explore doing that. So we'll have to pull some staff over into the. So that'll allow the annex to be used on it uh, while you know, decisions made on what the next steps are. So um, that could make my office come back. So what will end up happening is you know, we're, we'll have to, and I, if we're going to have, if everyone's going to bear the burden of it, it's got to be me and my team. I I, I, I don't. I don't need the assessor rambling, and the, I don't need poor Corey and, and Diane, you know, homeless. Uh, so, uh, and we don't have any other room, right? The, the town has no real swing space. Uh, and, uh, so, where we are is is we're we're working through that. Uh, we're going to try to minimize the impact on services. Uh, that said, it's, it's highly likely that next week we'll start restricting access to records. You have to make appointments to see records because they're not all going to be available. We can still have those. So there are systems in the historic build side of the building that are still there, like IT. You know? Um, you know, boilers and um, and storage, and we can't move that stuff. So um, we'll still be able to access that, even when the fire uh, separation work is done. That's that's no one can no can actually work there. So um, um, so I, I, the select board's actively looking at. Uh, there's an RFP in front of them that was out on the street for temporary space. Uh, there were two responses, uh, so they're they're you know weighing what to do. Um, and I know that there was a big conversation last night with, with a number of different things on the table um, from various residents. And um, uh, the, the most important thing being that the board recognizes that, you know, as one of the board members said, the bell has rung, we can't ignore it anymore. <laughs> we can't pretend this isn't happening, even though there's some residents who seem to want to return us to 1987. And it's like, no, <laughs> um, sorry. Um, sorry. Let me guess. So I'm not saying anything anymore. You can just watch the you can watch the video yourself. So uh, I'm not questioning anybody's motives. I'm just saying that it's uh, you know it, 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 a, a vote of, a vote of no is a decision. I, I don't have to you know poor Mary knows all of this right all the work that they did and that committee. I mean if that had happened and I, I'm sorry to bring this up if that had happened we've had a we've had a brand new town hall a pre pandemic crisis <laughs> all done all compliant and. Now we have people saying, oh, we, we really should have done that. Well, well, we should do that now. Well, we should have done it six years ago. And I'm sorry, the price has now doubled and you can't get a take back seat on a, on a vote now from six years ago, right? It doesn't, unless you want to give us $25 million. If you have it, I'll take it and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. But all these people who are saying we need to keep that on the historic common, um, nobody seems to have the funding for it. So. Chris, uh, just one quick question. The vaults where the town records are held are those, those fire, are fire those are fire rated so. okay and that's another reason by the way to maintain safely right the treasure collector and, and the clerk in the in the annex because they have vaults and records there right so um uh, and by the way people can still come in you know we're gonna, we're gonna limit access but you know there will be no more public meetings in the building not that there have been for a while um but the goal the goal is to keep people safe and then uh, to make sure we continue to provide services that basement meeting room is a little creepy, and it's no great. We're going to use that. No, it's closed. That's not IT. <laughs> so there's no meeting rooms. Any, I mean, the building cannot hold a public meeting. It's not. It, it okay. doesn't need code for that. And uh, that said, you know, the basement's been IT. By the way, the schools kicked. The schools said we don't have any more space, so Rod had to relocate his IT team back office where they repair stuff, right, and do into our basement. So that's where he is now. So 
you know, it's not, it's just all the stuff that everybody wants to see or do or think about that much, but it's critical. If we don't have the IT office fixing stuff, if we don't have facilities for the home, if we don't collect taxes, there is no school and there's no public works and there's no police. Um, may not be sexy, but it's fundamental. And poor Corey, you know, I can't say, oh, Corey, I want you to train at home remotely. It's like, you know, it's not going to work really well to do that. Um, now, that, that, that said, you know, we all, we, we are more flexible with work from home. I want to be clear. We are doing that. Uh, I'm doing this being, we're all doing this being from home right now, or wherever we happen to be. Um, I do stuff from home. Michelle, uh, I, Michelle, I let Michelle take time to work from home. She's more productive there. That said, everyone doesn't like it. And everyone doesn't have a home office. And everyone doesn't have access to everything when they're at home. So um, we're trying to be flexible and adapt. Um, so uh, I, there's a lot of people asking questions. Let me stop. Okay. I saw Diane's hand first, and then I'll just go across the top row, which is Mark, Mike, and Mary. I think my hand was last, but um, nonetheless, just a really quick question on the RFPs that were issued, Chris. Is, is, that, is there a timeline on the consideration of those, and is the expectation that we would be accepting one of those bids? Um, I think a serious consideration being made of them, yes. Um, the the outreach timeline is ninety days, but I don't you know I don't think it's going to last. Now. I don't think I don't think anyone wants the process to go that long. So uh, the board's taking a very serious look at. Uh, the board has talked about meeting next week again uh, if it needs to, because it was not wasn't a meeting scheduled. It's like that. Okay, Mark. Um, Chris, what's the what's the timing of the public safety building? Um, closing and any available space potentially up there before a, a design is done and and bids and, and that whole process. Um, so we're going to close on that. We're scheduled to clo close on, uh, you're talking about 135 Pleasant. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 135 King, the building up on CDC. Correct. Um, so we're scheduled to close on on April 1st. That said, we have access to it today, except there's still some tenants lingering. So, and what's happening is there's not a lot of space in town, so everything's kind of locked up. So until the town makes a decision on what it wants to do with these RFPs, that then can potentially open up space for other people to move around in town because there's a couple do of we, and, and do we and do we think we could potentially occupy that with some folks before the project for the police and fire actually begins? Because that'll have to go through its whole design process and procurement. And that's you know, probably a year before that thing even gets going. So yeah, that yeah, that's been on the table as, as temporary space, um, because there is like there are already built offices and there's bathrooms and everything in there and there's parking. That said, the challenge with that space as it's configured is not the space, it's the access. You can't make lefts in and out of here safely, unless you're a police car or a fire engine, right? But me or you, you know, you're taking your life in your hands trying to make a left or, uh, in or out. So you have to kind of make a big box around town, uh, which is fine if we're just working there. But if you're having constituents come in and out, it's probably not the most effective thing to do. Um that said, if you have to back office people there, Mark, it's definitely on the table as a possible site. Yeah, I'm just thinking that in, in combination with the use of the annex. Yeah. You, you know, as, as long as we can continue to occupy the annex, we're going to take care of the fire doors. We have the, we ha we have the proper life safety measures in place in the annex. We don't hold public meetings there. And just again, not a, so not a permanent solution here, just buying time until we can get through the next iteration of whatever that may be um and presenting it but just at least you know housing that and um and being able to house people uh in a property that we 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 already own or we have just recently purchased if anybody has like a, a, a barn in the back that's really nice or like a, a second well, of, of rooms over your garage let me know we can like maybe you know start working something out so, or anyone's away for the winter i'll take your house we could take your house for the winter maybe we could rent some she sheds around town there you go are you good, Mark? No? Yes, thank you. Okay. okay, Mike? Hey, Chris, so if I try to sort of scenario analysis this out, is is the the hope that, you know, bids are, you know, so a plan is derived, bids are submitted, and we go to town meeting to once again ask the voters for, a, you know, to bond a, a project, because clearly this is going to be an amount that needs to be bonded. Um, is, is that the the general game plan here? And then in the interim, are there costs that are going to have to be borne 
And how are those going to be financed so out of free cash flow? And this is sort of the, I hate to say it, but just kind of death spiral that we all talked about in the spring of 2023, 20, uh, um, you know, about doing nothing. So how how, how is this anticipated or hoped that this will play out? I know it's sort of early days, but any any sense of that? Well, I, I, as I as I said, we had we we do have a little bit of opera like opera money that we had ourselves and we spent on anything that will be able to be used to do this kind of interim work because we're talking about I think it's, the estimate is about thirty five thousand dollars for this fire separation. Um, and if we need to squeeze a little bit more out for like you know again we can move on a limited basis we can use our facilities team to move on a limited basis we're just moving around town right so you know and if we have to you know cobble together some temporary furniture we can do that kind of thing too such as we're able and so. And we have scoped out some of our, our existing spaces. That are, there are a lot of them. Um, I've already had you know pushback on that from some groups, and I'm like, look, <laughs> you know, we, we have to keep government operating. I, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to displace, trying to minimize the displacement of anything else. At the same time, you know, we have to provide government functions, like with the election. Yeah, you, you don't have to explain that to me. I get it. I, I'm I'm just more trying to get to the essence of of paying for this because that's where you know the rubber is going to meet the road. It's also where it keeps stalling, you know, on the floor of town hall and and annual so annual town meeting. I, I, I think I think annual town meeting is where this. So we could do little the little stuff, Mike. I think with the money to do the little things we need to do, but the big picture when when that's arrived at, and again, I. I, I I'm hoping over the next few weeks that will come into a little bit more clarity. Um, then um, I, I think I, at annual time meeting is when the asks will be made for uh, whatever funding needs to happen, or or at the very least, uh, when I say funding, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a plan to do all the work at town at, at 41 Highland, wherever that may be. That said, there may be interim work that has to be done, and um, you know, I hope the hope is that we can have. I, I know the board is actively working to get something together so that a, a decision can be made in the spring. So I guess, you know, as, as we try to think about, you know, again, other sources of funding, um, you know, for last last uh, spring, CPC was going to kick in some money on the, you know, the whole redo, you know, the, 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 um, the whole, you know, the, the new project. Uh, and, and then are there grants or anything given we're restoring a historic building? Just trying to think through, you know, what are some levers that can be pulled that, you know, can be explored that, you know, can can help minimize this? Because, I mean, we all know the costs are going to go up. They're going to be prohibitive. And that twenty four million dollar price tag last spring might turn out to look pretty good. Everything's being looked at. Okay. Mary, uh, how many staff need to physically be on site at least? Just We'll just say that. Right, yeah. So, so on, on any given day, everyone does not have to do that. That's, that's absolutely true. That said, um, we're trying to figure out how, like, f for example, um, you know, the, the treasure collector does collect money. They, they, they secure stuff. Uh, you know, they, they have to have a, they have to have secure uh, 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 internet connectivity with security, so you know, our wires don't get stolen, and you know that kind of stuff. No, there are things that need to happen in that right, building. Right. That said, there are, right, and there are, that said, there are also people or do field like the assessors do a fair amount of field work, our health agent and our conservation agent do a fair amount of field work. So they don't necessarily need to be at their desks all the time. So we're trying to figure out a way to maybe shrink that footprint a little bit and have kind of shared desks or shared space. Um, and again, you know, you know, we've let people work from home. You know, if Corey needs to work from home for and, and do some backups, that's fine. She has full access to our systems from home. Um, that and again, we, you know, we do Zoom meetings. I mean, I, you know, uh, that's it. You know, we've had a couple of in all staff meetings in my, you know, in, in the town manager's office the last couple of weeks. And the best way to have those is face to face. Uh, so, uh, um, let me clarify. I'm not. I'm not um, looking for validation about what the footprint needs to be. I've, you know, I've been on this rodeo. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> um, I'm more. I'm. I'm actually more concerned about the working conditions that you and your staff have had to live through over the last decade, um, if not longer, and just the risk of losing people that don't want to be on this cycle again. 
so yes, I hear you, and 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 I fully appreciate that, and I, I and I and and then this this is one of the consequences, right? Uh, you know, we've been lucky, and we've recruited. I mean, Corey Grant is a nice service that I do right now, but it's not going to. So, uh, and she may end up being in my office, right? <laughs> Maybe her new office is my office. Um, so, um, her temporary office. So, um, yeah, that is a challenge. And now, like I said, we've tried to keep a real collegial atmosphere. We're all working together. We're all trying to you know pull together on this. Um, and we have to make sure that people are not only are safe, right? It's kind of a baseline, right? Safe, but, you know, comfortable, safe, accessible, you know. Um, and, you know, Mary, I mean, the, the historic structure never had air conditioning. So there's always been those window units and they flipped the circuit breaker. We don't even have circuit breakers. They're actually, what are those things called? Fuses. They're knob sorry. and tube. Knob, no, knob and, and tube fuses. It's like you're walking at the Smithsonian Museum and watching an experiment on electricity from 1936. Um, and, um and and on on and last summer the H the AC part of the HVAC in the in the annex failed, so we had to put winter units there too, uh, which meant that the hallways and the bathrooms were no longer air conditioned. So um, on gross days, that just you know it's it's hot, and um, so that's not fixed, and that can't be fixed. That's not fixable. The AC part of that building of that unit cannot be repaired. Um, so you're right. There are going to be other issues now. Uh, you know, Mark did. Mark Cameron did point out the um, 135 King, and there, there might be a way to do some of that, you know. And then we have, there's a couple of other spaces that, again, I don't want to start any things that having people start assaulting me when I walk into the building tomorrow, but uh, we're looking at other space in as less impactful a way as possible that could allow people safe, comfortable working environments. And we may have to, one of the things we may have to do is is, is limit access. Right? We may have to say, we, we can only get to the treasure park for a couple of days a week, I'm sorry, or the building department can only be open at certain hours. Um, and, um, you know, th th that's, we're, we're, we're reviewing those things literally every day. Um, uh, that's it. The fire watch to effect. We're going to probably start closing town on Fridays now to the public just to allow more flexibility internally and also to allow us to continue to, to pack and assess. Right. So, you know, we, we don't want to have, we did a lot of work, um, as part of the last study and the last work uh, to, to digitize, to, to get a lot of our records cleaned up. If you know, you remember Mary, I mean, there was a, a rabbit warren of all kinds of crap on the third floor level, right? It's all gone. We got all that gone. And it's all, it's all boxed up. And that said, there's still a lot of stuff. The bill does a lot of stuff in there. And um, we, we also need to be able to keep the staff in connection with their records. The assessors are electronic. That's, you know, their stuff's all electronic. So they could go almost anywhere. Uh, that said, the the um, the um, treasure collectors, you know, and, and they're partially that way. Um, on the other hand, uh, sewer department's records are not electronic at all. So if they need to pull a file on a, on a, on a particular property, it's a, literally a file and a filing cabinet. So um, we're going to have to, you know, we're not going to, people aren't able to get, those are all in the, in the historic annex. We can't, the historic structure, we can't move them anywhere else right now. So if somebody wants them, we're going to have to schedule, start scheduling those Next starting next week, and you're gonna have to okay. I want to see the file for 4100. Okay, well, we'll see you on Tuesday at three <laughs> or whatever, right? And you can come in and look at it. And um, and I, I do think we're gonna have to explore explore um more digitization. So, um, okay. we, we, that, and uh, we could talk about this for hours upon hours, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's other things to get to. Um, do you want to put you back on what I said, Corey? I was going to say, um, one of my goals, and I had mentioned it to Michelle, and then she was on board with it, is I wanted to digitize the accounting office. Um, I had some ideas just to make it more electronic, because like to your question, Mary, you know, I would think the accounting office would be one of the ones that we wouldn't need to necessarily be on site every day all the time. Um, we are still a little bit, you know, I guess like we're dinosaur age, we, you know, very much paper. Um, and then I just noticed that as an outsider coming in and coming from places that were very electronic, digitized, uh, I was like, I think that's a great goal and project for us, you know, over the, but let me get my feet wet and <laughs> foundation first and understanding, but um, definitely is a goal of mine to do for that department. I think it'll make it a lot more streamlined and a lot more um, easy and efficient. That's awesome. Thank you. Great. And I see that Mark has his hand up too, and he's been very patient. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Chris, you briefly mentioned uh, something about payment processing. Is there anything from sort of an IT security standpoint that we can't do virtually currently that there is an IT solution for that perhaps we should explore spending money instead of 
fixing up an old building, maybe we spend money to, you know, move into the 21st century. Um, you know, just a little bit of personal background. I work for the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We process all the federal government's very sensitive labor market data. Um, none of this could be processed remotely before COVID. And then COVID hit and we had to figure out a way to do this. So the reason I have Uh, he froze. Here in my solutions to some of the problems we might be facing. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, so, so, so Mark, exactly. Um, so I, I will tell you this. So um, we have done a, a, the, 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 what the pandemic did for us was it, it vaulted us light years ahead in, in our ability to do things like this. Right? We couldn't have done this meeting that we're doing tonight and we've been doing now for a couple of years before the pandemic. Um, we also are able to provide more services virtually. We've, we've moved the building department to a large extent. Uh, the processing is, is almost all virtual now and, concert, and, uh, and planning and um, um, health. So we're moving in that direction. Now, on the treasury side, we do have a lot of sophisticated, uh, we've, we've gotten a, a long way. I just don't know how far that extends. Uh, and and um, we do have to be very careful about that. Um, so that said, we've, we've, we've even, we, Ron and his team are very, they're on the municipal cutting edge uh, of IT security. Again, we've got to do factor authentication, a lot of things that we're required to do for our insurance. It's more cumbersome, but quite frankly, it does at least add a level of security. Um, and um, at least from, and, and we do have a, a quite a lot of extensive monitoring going on of our systems to maintain them. So um, the short answer to your question is, yes, we're doing all of, looking at all of that. And this last year, we did a lot of investment in cybersecurity uh, to help us do more remote work safely. Thanks. Okay, so um, let's move along and just go just a brief update on the six month fiscal situation. So you have lots, all of you got lots of materials. If any of you have any questions offline, feel free to call me or Corey. Um, the, the quick highlight is we're, it, we're pretty much on target. Um, the, 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 everything looks pretty good. Um, uh, water's running a little ahead. And I think that's partly uh, because water use is up for the last six months from last year. So you, know, you sell more water, you have more revenue. It's, it's a very simple equation in the water department. Sewer's almost exactly on target. Um, and in the general fund, we're you know we're 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 good. We're not you know gushing money, so uh, we're not going to have a bad year. Um, that said, we we should be fine. Everything's coming in fine. Um, one thing to note as we look though at the bigger picture, uh, I don't know if all of you have seen that the state is uh, the governor implemented mid-year budget cuts for the first time uh, since the pandemic, and um, uh, it didn't affect the operating budget, but it did affect a lot of other things, and we you know lost part of some earmarks, uh, for example, one for a new vehicle for the animal control officer, we lost half of them. And um, the estimate for next year is only a 2% increase, um, which is gonna cap their spending, which again, that's gonna have some impact. The governor did just release a budget. I, I did not have a chance to see the cherry sheets today. The uh, cherry sheets are, are shows where the municipal aid lines are. I know the, the House and Senate are gonna really chew that up anyway. so. Um, we're probably unlikely to know hard data until June about where it's going to end up. And they're not going to short Chapter 70 or unrestricted local aid uh, in an auction here. Um, I will say that on the other side of it, the millionaire's tax, the, uh, the which is going to education and, and uh, infrastructure or loans, uh, we did get a piece of that this year. We, we got an extra $100,000 for this cycle in our Chapter 90 money. That's, it. It's, that's a 50% increase because we usually get about 200000 So we got an extra hundred. dollars uh, So we have $300,000. I don't know if that'll continue. The governor just filed a bill which pretty much level funds uh, Chapter 90 yet again, but she's doing it for two years. So at least we'll know that we'll have the 200000 for two straight years as opposed to just one and waiting for the next year. Um, and we'll see if they put more money in for the millionaire's tax in the next cycle. But we did get a lot of money from that. I, I, I While education is, is one of the targeted areas, all the education spending at the state level has been for uh, higher education. It's been for, you know, nursing programs and, you know, low cost or no cost community college. Uh, I don't think any of it uh, has been trickling down to uh, elementary and secondary education. So 
we'll keep watching that. Um, I mean, that tax doesn't generate an unlimited amount of money. So I, I, I don't know if and when we'll see that. Um, that said, this year is the first year, and we, we did all day kindergarten. So we theoretically should see an increase in our chapter 70 based on the fact that all of those kindergarten students count as full students, and we should be getting full chapter 70 um, allocations for them. So I'm hoping we'll see that increase. Um, so um, I, I think, I, you know, next, we also had a decent new growth year. Um, uh, our new growth number was a little over eight hundred thousand dollars. We only budgeted in like five and change, uh, and we and that'll help us in the next cycle because uh, we, we we're not, not going to use that money in this cycle. So um, that, that does give us a little bit of a help. It's also really the third year of a three-year contract, um, three percent increases from staff across the board next year. So it's going to be a little tighter um, on the personnel side, and then we're going to go into the contract negotiations. So I'm giving you a little bit of where we are and where we're looking at. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, again, you can ask me now. We can talk often. Okay, thank you. Um, capital plan review. First, the first draft of the um, capital plan was included with the documents that we had. Are there any changes to what we got? Yeah, so um, do you have the school's responses to the questions? I don't know if you have that part of it. Um, I did see a spreadsheet with cross-offs, and I wasn't quite clear on whether or not that was things that had been crossed off not to be considered or just. So what? So let me just give you a, a, just a quick um, process. So what we're doing this this year, which we've been trying to do before the pandemic, was we're starting with the select board. We're, we're, we're doing, we're starting internally, right? It's, my office pulls everything together. We meet with departments. We've done all of that. We met with the schools. And now that we have these two other funds, we're trying to allocate, you know, the first cut of those two those two new funds, and uh, the road, the school fund, and the road. And um, so we've done that first cut. Uh, unfortunately, like like any year, we had a little curveball. Um, the heating and cooling system at the senior center has failed. Um, oh man! Uh, and uh, it's going to cost. We just got a quote for four hundred thousand dollars, and that's going to have to be replaced. It's not all type. It's not an alternative. Right? Yeah. This is a so uh, uh, again, uh, I, I mean, no disrespect to people who built the building, but again, you know, uh, things happen, right? Because eight years old, we should not have to replace the heating system after eight years. Which, you know, um, there's a problem with the pie. I, I won't go into all of the details. Like, so, so uh, but Nick and his team have worked really hard on this, and we brought Mitsubishi in as the system. You know, it's their system, um, and, and 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 it is what it is. So uh, unfortunately, that's going to be a priority. Now. We got to we got to fix it. You know? The good news is that what I'm told is when it's replaced, it should be fairly problem free. The 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 version of this heat pump system we have is it's been replaced technologically so that the new systems are less prone to the problems we're having with leaking pipes. Um uh, what's happening is that the, the chemicals in there leak out and then there's no pressure and then the system's done, right? So then yeah and the building wasn't zoned. <laughs> the building wasn't so you you, you it was almost, you you couldn't just turn off part of it. Like if you have a Imagine your water system in your house. You only have one shutter for the whole house. So you can't just shut off the pipe that's leaking. So we've installed those as we've gone along. And the system has also discovered it was undersized. The system was not, uh, it's an undersized system. It wasn't, now that often happens in commercial buildings because you're not banking the building all the time. But uh, for a senior center, when you show people warm in the winter um, and cool in the summer, you're going to use the AC and the heat. And uh, unfortunately, the system is also undersized. So it's been strained on top of things. So those is those elements will all be fixed, uh, but again, the estimate we just got is four hundred thousand dollars. So that's kind of displacing something in the capital plan uh, for sure. Um, so um, that said, the, the select board is it's, it's gotten the first cut. They're going to get the next one, um, and then it'll go to capital. Um, my hope was that we'd have a little more constrained process, uh, a little more deliberate process. Where it's like, here are the projects. Here you go. Uh, that's quite, and here, here, here's the first cut. You have questions, give us all the questions. We'll answer all the questions and then, you know, give your recommendation. You shouldn't have to go back four or five, six times, right? It should be go in, here's the project, you got questions. Here's your round of questions. Let's get them answered, right? Um, that's the hope. Um, and uh, so we'll see how that plays out. So um, you kind of get an updated version of all this. I'll, I'll send it out to you. To, um, if not the end of this week, the beginning of the next, just so you're all the loop on what projects are. And in terms yeah. of the operating budget, just so you're also aware, because we're 10 minutes, June 3rd, everything's been pushed back about a month. 
So the operating budget is being prepared now, and you'll see a cut of that at the end of February. Normally, it would have been the end of January, but you know, we, we, we gained ourselves a few weeks by pushing town meeting. Okay, and then um, how are we doing on the budget? And town meeting planning calendar. Are we on task for that? Or? Yeah, you have that, right? I, I'm sure you have you've gotten all right. So um, yeah, so so what I left out of there was joint meetings. Those have been kind of hit and miss. And one of the biggest challenges that you folks meet virtually and it's like where we in person. So it's very hard to hybridize that. Um, so I'm hoping that with 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 time and structure, we we if people want to have joint meetings, we can most certainly schedule them. But I didn't I'm not, you know, so Gene, if you want to talk to Gene about you know, if a joint meeting on schools or capital makes sense, feel free. Um, I'm happy to help with any of that planning. Um, because we have a little more time, the school budget calendar is staying on its clock. So the hope is that they'll actually be done by March. So there'll be actually plenty of time to, to have conversations. Uh, yeah, I did. I did see that they're planning their um, their their overview in early March, and then they're going to vote it, I think, on the 27th of March. So that gives us a little bit of time in between. There's 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 a good size gap in between the proposal and the final vote. So that's good also. You know, and again, I have to sit down with Corey and probably with Don and uh, as well, but just to go back over our revenues. I mean, we're, we know what we have to get to. You know, we really need to get to you know three three and a half percent of of, of growth in the uh, if we can, uh, just to meet you know the the the, the, the personnel costs um this year's health costs uh we've already been you know we've been given the range uh they go up to, it goes up to nine plus i think nine and a half um, we don't know where we are yet we haven't gotten our quote um, so um you know we have to we're preparing for that and um you know, the insurance market as a whole we've been pretty good but you know it, yeah the world is is not a great place to be an insurance company right now so uh wow. um that's ninety percent is actually a pretty good place to be. I think yeah, market so, uh, work is like twenty four percent, and we've been really aggressive on our pension, um, uh, making sure that we get people off as they leave. And, and you know, we had a battle last last cycle with Norfolk County because they literally had someone on our payroll who didn't ex wasn't ours, so, and it caused it caused me to question their entire formula, and they took that person off. There were a couple of people that um, they had that had they were there was a couple of examples where we had two people in basically one position. Somebody had left and we had a new person on and they were showing them both. I'm like, that's not okay. I said, um, so uh, Linda in the treasurer collection has been very aggressive with them, making sure that they're on top of our payroll list. So I'm hoping that we get the new pension numbers out. They'll be good. Plus the market, the one thing that's been a, a big highlight is the stock market. Right? And then a fair amount of the pension is in the market. So I'm hoping that that, that will you know, not require a crazy amount of increase. This, uh, I will know that fairly shortly. So I know I'm digressing off capital to operate. That's okay. Can you ask Tracy, please, if she could circulate that to us again, just so that it's top yeah. of mind and we don't have to dig through the papers because there's yeah, a while. The calendar. You want the calendar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while since we received it. So it would be okay. great to have a refresh. No problem. And I think that's all we have for you, unless you have something for us that we didn't cover. I, I don't know. I think I've covered a lot. So I think I've taken up a lot of your time tonight. So no, and that's good. Thank you. It's good for me to kind of be brought up to speed again. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the open committee position of secretary. And I sat and met with Leontina the other day. We had coffee so that I know what she actually looks like instead of her knowing us, but we don't know her. Um, so it was nice to get to meet her. And um, so the secretary position, now that we have an official note taker, is a much easier lift. So if somebody would like to volunteer, just it's mostly making sure that the minutes get get posted on a timely basis after we approve them. That's pretty much the responsibility. It wouldn't even be taking the minutes. So does anyone want to raise their hand? That's a no, I guess. Nobody's doing it. <laughs> I think you look at who's not here. You know, Rob would be a perfect candidate. I could just throw that out. I actually, second that. <laughs> actually, he would be. And like I said, it's a pretty easy lift compared to what he's been doing for us. So 
he knows better than to take it to take a night off during a meeting. Oh, he really does. Okay, so I'll reach out to him and see if he will if he would be willing to do that. But he's only with us halfway through the year, so correct. But, but maybe, maybe someone else will see how easy it is and agree to take it on. Um, it's my understanding that Lee and Tina actually submits the PDF files um, to the clerk's office. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it, you're really just talking about somebody making sure everything is logged. Right. Right. Um, and make sure that, you know, all the minutes are up. Now, when I put the minute re minutes review approval here, I listed the dates of the ones that need to be approved. And I hope to be able to continue to do that just because I was always kind of clueless about what we had already posted and what we hadn't. And rather than go on the website and check, which would have made sense, um, but I wasn't the secretary. Um, so we do have three sets of minutes to approve tonight. Um, we also have to do the review of the committee liaisons. So let's do the approval of minutes first, and then we'll we'll go back to the committee liaisons. So has everybody had a chance to look at the three sets of minutes? We're looking at November 8th, December 5th, and January 10th. them up any questions no okay no. so okay. you're gonna say something mike no okay so then if we're ready to move on the minutes of november 8th 2023 could i have a motion to approve those minutes so move so move second any discussion? Okay, and then we'll go to a roll call vote, please. Mike Barkley? Aye. Mark Cameron? Mark? Mark Cameron, aye. Um, fr friends, not here. Uh, Diane Kennedy? Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Maggi? I will abstain as it was my birthday and I was not present. Okay. Mary McGoldrick? Aye. Meg Wheeler? Meg Wheeler, aye. And Gina Stino, I am an aye also. Okay, so then we'll move to the December 5th meeting. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? second. Who was that? I'm sorry. Mark Cameron. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, any discussion on those? Then we will move to a roll call vote, please. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Diane Kennedy. I'm abstaining, I wasn't present. Okay. Mark Maggi. Aye. Mary McGoldrick. Aye. Meg Wheeler? I'm abstaining. I wasn't present. Okay. And Gina Stino, I'm an I. And the last set to be approved is January 10th, 2024. Do I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second? Second. So I have Mary and Mike. Okay. Any comments? So a roll call vote, please. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Diane Kennedy. Abstaining. December and January are not my months. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Maggi. Abstaining as well. It wasn't my birthday, but I was arguing with a contractor over this kitchen project. I was going to say, you can't have two birthday meetings in a, in a row. <laughs> no, no. This is one where I would have preferred to, but there was some things going awry on this very project. Okay. But I need to attend to. Mary McGoldrick. Aye. Meg Wheeler. Uh, also abstaining, I was not there. And Gina Stino, aye. 
Okay, that's great. So let's go back and review the committee liaisons. And the last list I have is dated January 19th, 2023. And we just kept pushing it forward and not really finalizing. So I just want to make sure that people are still okay with their assignments and or, and or maybe want to take on something different. So the first one we have is alternative energy and Fran Collins was on that. So he's not here. So I guess he still remains on that, at least for now, unless he says he doesn't want to do it anymore. And then capital budget committee was Rob Hillman and Mike Barkley. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, I'll stick with capital. Okay. And then community preservation was Meg Wheeler and it was Patrick, but He's gone. So does someone else want to serve with Meg? Or Meg, are you okay doing that yourself? Um, I'm fine with that. And I'm obviously happy to have someone else if they want to join. Patrick's partner will do that. if if Okay. De depending on how these stack up, because I wasn't there when they got assigned. So I don't know what else is Patrick's partner, assigned. You're not, Diane. Well, excuse me? You're not. You're not on any of them, Diane, because you okay. were on the committee. Happy to do CPC. I served on it for a number of years. So Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, DPW and facilities, that was Fran Collins and Patrick. Is there somebody else be, that I, might want to be on? I can, I, can, I can do it with Fran. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, Harbor Committee. That was Fran Collins, and I think he likes that one. He does. Let's uh, not forget about Rob. Salty Hill. Mariner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, let's stack Rob up. Okay, so the next one is Library and Elder Affairs. Any I'll do that. Other? Okay, thank I, you. I did elders for a long time, yep. Next is planning and zoning. That was Patrick and Mary. Um, I'm happy to stay on that since I live with the developer. Sure. If anyone wants to hang out with me there, that would be fine. <laughs> it's zoning and which one? Zoning and planning? Yeah. Yes. No, I need I, I need a break. Yeah. Put put Rob on there, Gene. Okay. Rob and I can do it. He can always say no but we might not let him. Um, so next is police and fire. And that was Mike. Yep. I'll, I'm, I'll stay with that. Okay. And then Peb. I think that's me, right? Mark. Yes. Are you good staying on that? Yeah. I mean, I was on Peb. So I, I think by mistake, I was actually on this and Peb at the same time. And then someone told me I couldn't be on both. Um, so I'm happy to be the liaison. Okay, great. Um, so school committee was Gina Stino, Ellen Marr, who's no longer with us, and Mary McGoldrick. So we I, I am happy to continue to carry the flag. Okay, thank you. I can I can I don't mind jumping on that too if you need a hand. That would be awesome, Mark. Oh, okay. You know, it might be good for them to have a change of pace and not have to look at me just because I was the chair of that committee for nine years and I was a little unpopular at the end with a couple of the new members, let's just say. So if you're willing to take that on, I would appreciate that. But if something's needed yep. for me, I'm happy to happy to help. Okay. Um, school building committee. That was Mary. I can take that. I guess I, guess I can do that one too. <laughs> that one's kind of... That one dovetails with that one. And yeah, and they kind of go hand in hand. They do. <laughs> Probably with my background, that makes sense. Okay. And, and Mike, if you if Mike, if you need help on the police and fire for anything related to the, the project, I'd be happy to help there as well. Yeah, I okay. can offer the either Great. of those community. Okay, let me just find that one. Okay. Uh, select board. That was Rob. And he admits that he likes to watch meetings. <laughs> so let's keep him on that. 
um, water and sewer. That was Robin Fran. I'm thinking that Fran will probably. Yeah, I could do that instead of Rob, unless Rob really wants to. You can put my name there. Okay. And I'll put a question mark next to Fran. And then Town Hall Building Committee. That was Mary and Meg, but I don't know that I don't know that we really need that one right now. Yeah, Mary did it just to hang that out. That committee went down. Uh, and let's be honest, that was all Mary. <laughs> committee, those, those, those multiple committees went down like the Titanic. Yeah, that but, went down like four or five times. So that's yeah. not a pretty sight. I, People I just wanted to do that to hang out with Mark Cameron, but now he's on our committee. So we're all set. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna put that one down as a hold. And if it resurfaces, then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. Is that we'll worth it? Yeah. Okay, great. If any of those bigger ones need someone else on them as a backup, I'm happy to, whether it's uh, police and fire or um, school building, if any of those bigger ones need another person, I'm happy to jump. Mark, what what about water sewer? I think that would be great with your skill what do you set. Say? Um, because I'm full of shit, or what are you saying about sewer there? I, I didn't say that. I'm texting that to you, but no, no, no. Um, <laughs> no, just, you know, they're enterprise I'm funds. They, they run differently. There's a lot of complexity to it, so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm happy to chip in. Let me know. Okay. Um, so I have, so I, I have for that one, Diane and Fran with a question mark, but we'll check with Fran next time. And if we need you, Mark, we really appreciate that you've stepped up for that. Thank yeah, you. I think Fran has maybe three or four. So I know he likes Harbor. So if yeah. me taking water and sewer with Diane uh, lightens his load so we can focus on the stuff he likes, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Happy to help. Okay. I'm going to cross him off the, of that one then. Thank you. I just I don't want to make friend man if he really is passionate about water and sewer. I don't want to take his spot. How do you get passionate about water and sewer? And, and honestly, passionate about, Brad's passionate about a lot of things. So. Yeah, I know. I know. It, I'm just teasing. These are all public meetings, and we can all participate, you know, or at least attend right. and listen in Anybody, as, as we want to. So I'm sure that Rob will be anxiously watching all of these meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did you have a question? Uh, it was actually just a comment. I mean, the the public safety facility um, that that's going to dovetail with capital, and so if there's another hand on deck, because with Rob rolling off, um, there there could be a lot of action on on that. And so while there's no more building committee, there's a uh, public. I don't know. There, there, I would imagine there's going to be a public safety building committee at some point. Okay, I'll add that to the bottom of the list, and we can put it on an agenda to discuss. Well, Mark, Mark seemed interested in that. So um, okay. if he's not overcommitted at that point, and, and I'd be happy to be part of that as well. Okay. Just let me know where we need a body, whether it's um, public safety or water and sewer. And I'm happy to, like I said, OPEP is a pretty light lift at this point. It's largely on cruise control. Um, barring some unforeseen change into town policy. So just let me know you need me and I'm happy to ship it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So uh, that brings us to the date for our next meeting. And I would say as we kind of approach the ramp up to the budget and um, town meeting that we probably don't need to be meeting every week, that's for sure, because at some point in time, pretty soon we will be. So I would like to propose that the next meeting is February 28th. And the reason for that, instead of doing two meetings in February, um, the 14th is Valentine's Day. And I'm sure that none of you want to be here with me on Valentine's Day. Um, and then the following week is school vacation week and we're not supposed to have meetings during school vacation week. So that puts us at the 28th. Anybody have any thoughts on that or does that work for you? Good. That works, yeah. however, a meeting on Valentine's Day would be a great excuse. Oh, I'm gonna report you. Oh. <laughs> Wait, the, the following week or the, the week before is school vacation week? I have to say I have met on my birthday and several other family birthdays. When I was on school, so. Uh, 
Yeah, the, the, I think school vacation week is the week of the 19th. President's oh, yeah, you're right. You're President's right. Day is late this year. So, so that would, then, they, then school yeah. vacation week then the 28th. Yeah, if you want to meet on so that oh. would be the That would be the 21st. So yep. We, right. yep. there aren't supposed to be public meetings that week. Yeah, I kind of feel like we should meet on the 29th just because we only get that chance one, once every four years, but we can stick to the Wednesday thing. <laughs> I would be happy not to meet on a Wednesday night, but it makes life difficult when other committees meet on that night because we can't watch their meetings except on the recordings, but that's okay. Um, so we'll keep it at February 28th at 7 p.m. And I don't have any topics not reasonably anticipated within 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So would someone like to make the motion to adjourn? So moved. And second. who would like to second? Okay, Diane. Okay. Mary. Okay, so we'll do a roll call, please. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. Meg Wheeler. Meg Wheeler, aye. And Gina Stino, I am an I also. Okay. So thank you very much.